To help kick off the Cozy Escape Book Club, Courtney and I will both be reading chapters from this month's book choice, which is Miracles and Murder by London Lovett. Now this is the first in her Port Danby Cozy Mystery Series. And I will be reading chapter one and kind of sharing my thoughts about what I'm excited for in the book and things that really stood out to me. And then Courtney will be reading chapter two to do the same, which I think kind of helps, especially if you've been busy, you just don't have time to check the book out. Or maybe you're on the fence and you're like, I don't know if I want to read this month's book because let's be real, we're all super busy and when it comes to reading, we only want to read things that are really, really good. So I really, really like this, which is kind of a spoiler, but we're going to read this chapter together, chat about it, and then at the end of the month, you can join us for the Cozy Escape Book Club live stream. Now we're going to try to alternate those between my channel and Courtney's channel, and that will be on the last Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And to reward you for showing up live, we do have a special giveaway for this month. And I'm pretty sure, like I feel 99.9% .9 confident we'll have a giveaway for every single live stream. And I realize that you, not everybody can make it live, and um, but we do want to reward those people who move things around in their schedule to make it live and hang out with us. All right, make sure to sign up below for the Cozy Miss, the Cozy Escape, I keep saying Cozy Mystery, the Cozy Escape Book Club uh, so that you get alerts on everything that's going out. Courtney and I do send out a newsletter on the 15th of every month. And we're going to be reading in my favorite place, which is my reading chair. So I've had this chair for, I think like 20 years. It's a, it's a one and a half couch, which means in theory, one and a half people can fit into it. So it's not really a love seat, but it's not like a single person couch. Super comfy. I have my iPad over here. I have a nice little wall of plants. I have some crystals and some happy cards. So it's just like my happy place. So this is where we're going to be reading. So this is cozy. I know it's like a smaller version. I don't have my DSLR. I just am filming on my iPhone. So here we go. It's chapter one of Miracles and Murder by London Lovett. I stepped back to admire my handiwork. I wasn't exactly Van Gogh, but I had to admit the tiny flowers I'd painted on the rustic bench were charming. I'd found the old bench at a yard sale and decided it would look great under the bay window, still leaving enough room for me to roll out my flower cards and set up my portable specials and deals chalkboard. Aside from falling in love with the eclectic charm of Port Danby, I'd fallen instantly in love with the small building I'd leased for my shop, Pink's Flowers. Like every shop in Harbor Lane, it was entirely unique with its Cape Cod shingles and deep bay window. Why not exactly traditional for the Cape Cod style, I'd had the wood siding painted a blush pink because, well, it was Pink's flowers. The thick window trim and the French door for the entry were painted bright white for a perfectly pleasing contrast. The unusual pink color had drawn a few judgmental glances from neighboring shop owners. But once everything was finished, people seemed to approve. I dipped my paintbrush into the bottle of lavender paint and as I pulled it out, my phone rang, startling me and triggering a small string of calamities. Purple paint dripped down my skin. I stepped sharply to the side to avoid more and kicked the paint bottle. It fell over and splashed across my sandal and foot. I flirted with the idea of not answering my phone, but I knew it was my mom. If I didn't answer, her head would fill with endless terrifying scenarios that might be keeping her daughter from answering the phone. Standing with my knee lifted and my purple foot high off the ground, I managed to keep my balance as I picked my phone up off the window ledge. Hey mom, can I call you back? I've got a purple foot. What? Why? Did you bruise it? Are you having a circulation problem? Maybe your shoes are too tight. My mom was highly skilled at dashing off numerous opinions and unnecessary advice without needing to stop for a breath. It's purple paint, mom. My shoes and circulatory system are fine. Well, why didn't you tell me? You gave me a fright. I didn't need to see through the phone to know she was placing her hand against your chest for added drama. I would have told you if you hadn't jumped right into your list of possible sources and solutions for a purple foot. I decided to give delaying the call another shot. Let me call you back. I'm just calling to see how things are going with the little flower shop. She couldn't have said the words with more disappointment if she'd punctuated each one with a sniffle. But I couldn't fault her for that. My poor mom, the eternal optimist, the woman who took huge pleasure in bragging to her book club about her daughter's successes, had suffered the trifecta of motherly letdowns. In the past few years, I'd quit medical school and walked out on a six-figure job in the perfume industry. But the last disappointment was the one that really had the poor woman reeling. I braced my free hand against the window ledge to keep my balance. The little flower shop is fine. 
I open in two weeks. My right leg is getting tired. Can I call you back? You need better shoes. I open my mouth to remind her of the painted foot, but decided it would be a waste of breath. Lacey, have you heard from Jacob? I made sure to huff an annoyance loud enough so she could hear me. Why would I hear from him? We aren't together anymore, and mentioning him in every phone call is not going to magically bring him back into my life. Jacob was the third person in the trifecta. He was like the Kentucky Derby of disappointing blows for my mom. He was rich and handsome and from a good family. Unfortunately, that good family forgot to teach him that if you were engaged to one woman, it wasn't good to date another woman. Jacob's family owned Giorgio's Perfume, a multi-million dollar fragrance company, and for one year, I had been employed as their head perfumer. I had been born with hyperosmia, or in more crude terms, a heightened sense of smell. Sometimes I considered it a gift, sometimes it was a curse. In the matter of my ex-fiance, it had been both. Jacob had hired me because I could detect the slightest aroma and even separate that microscopic odor into its basic parts, a skill that made me highly sought after in the perfume industry. But the man had somehow forgotten that skill when he started showing up wearing hints of another woman's perfume on his shirts. And whoever she was, she wasn't even wearing Giorgio perfume. I just worry that you were too hasty in your decision to break it off. Jacob was such a nice man. He was seeing other women behind my back. How does that make him nice? If you like him so much, give him a call. I'm sure as long as you make dad new batteries in the remote, as soon as you, as you make sure dad has new batteries in the remote, frozen entrees in the freezer, and plenty of bait in his tackle box, he won't even notice you missing. I hopped toward the door of the shop to go inside and clean my food. Lacey Sue Pinkerton, she said in her best angry mom voice. Uh-oh, the middle name is coming out. I'm in trouble. I opened the door and hopped clumsily inside. Kingston pulled his sharp beak out from under his wing. He looked angry about having his nap interrupted. You sound angry. Are you exercising, Lacey? Yes, mom, I'm in the middle of an aerobics class. That's enough, Miss Smarty Pants. Apparently, we'd moved from middle name to the good old Smarty Pants standby. I was 28, but a five minute conversation with my mom and I was back in sixth grade. I'm sorry, Mom. I would love to stay on the phone and rehash all the crummy stuff that has befallen me lately, but I need to get back to work. Lacey, sweetie, I worry you'll get terribly bored in a small town like Port Danby. Port Dancy. Port Danby, and I won't be bored. I'll be running a business. Yes, a flower shop. It's quite a change from your life in the big city, working with important people. It's a big change, Mom, and it's a change I wanted. Besides, I'm looking forward to living in a place where the smallest thing to happen is the neighborhood stray cat knocking over a trash can. There's something to be said for peace and tranquility. Her last words had gotten to me a bit. The notion of living too slowly in Port Danby had crossed my mind more than once, but I was determined to keep myself and my mind occupied. The paint had dried on my foot, caking into a lavender patch on my skin. I lowered the foot to the ground. I'll call you later, Mom. Kiss Dad for me. All right, call if you need anything. I hung up and glanced around at my shop. I couldn't help but smile. It was the first time in my working life that I'd gotten to make all the decisions and I was pleased with the outcome. Cape Cod exterior aside, I went totally batty trying to decide whether to go modern industrial or Soho chic. As is often the case, I couldn't make up my mind, so I went both and invented my own Soho industrial chic. Practicality played a big part too. I left the exposed brick walls in place for a corner that was home to the steel rolling shelves. I'd purchased at a factory to sell off. They were the perfect place to store vases, glassware, and ceramic pots. A long antique potter's table took up more than half the back wall. The deep porcelain basin sink left behind by Elsie the baker when she moved her kitchen next door was the perfect place for transferring plants and arranging bouquets. For a change of pace, I covered the brick wall in the other half of the shop with smooth plaster and bright white paint. An array of wood crates were nailed bottom side to the wall to create geometric cubbies for some of the prettier baubles I had for sale. The center of the store held my prize to find, a massive island with a black and white check tile counter and rows of drawers to keep ribbons, tissues, and all the small goodies needed in a flower shop. I painted the entire island in black chalkboard paint so I could write labels on the doors. Kingston, my pet crow, fluttered his large wings a few times, vibrating the ribbons hanging from spools on the wall. I grabbed a bag of sunflower seeds from the top drawer of the island and tossed a few into the dish on his perch. He busied himself with the treat as I stoked the silky black feathers on his house. Well, Kingston, the shop is almost ready. I think we're going to like it here. What do you think? Kingston flicked the empty shells out of the shell. Right. I guess you'll be happy as long as there are plenty of treats. So that was the end of chapter one. And like I said, this is a thin book, so it is a fast read. And I think it was a good chapter. So let's just talk about what I think it helped accomplish, which is the who, what, when, where, and why. So we know that Pinky, uh, Pink is the protagonist. And we know that she is opening a flower shop in a small town in Cape Cod called Port Danby. And we know why it's because she left her corporate job because her boyfriend cheated on her. And she, we know that she has no other family and she just moved to a small place where she knows nobody. And that her mother 
is kind of what you find in a cozy, like your typical like meddling, nosy mom who has a loveless marriage. Um, so that kind of wraps up her family. So excited to find out more about this pet crow. I think that is unique and different. Most people have like a cute fluffy dog or an adorable kitten and she is a crow. So that is different and unique. And obviously it's about flower shops and we know her superpower, which is her sense of smell. And that's probably what we can expect to find in the book and how she will help solve the crime. And we also know that she's 28 years old and single. So I feel like this first chapter did a really great job of establishing all the information that we need to get started on the rest of the book and let us know whether or not we're interested. So let me know too in the comments below if you were interested as well and um, what you thought of this first chapter. And don't forget to head over to, I'm not sure it is, to Courtney's channel. I'll leave information for that below and you can hear chapter two and her thoughts on that. Thank you.